Hey guys, I'm glad to be back after a long vacation. I don't know about you, but for me, there's nowhere better than home. Being away for a whole month and not being able to record has given me some withdrawal. What is life without talking into a microphone to people on the internet? Today we got a video that talks a bit about science, a bit about evolution, and a little bit about Islam. Before I start talking about that, let me first explain the difference between the meaning of evolution and the meaning of Darwinism. Ah, okay. Finally, we're going to be making a distinction between evolution and Darwinism, I see. I've seen so many people just sort of interchange these two terms. You know what's one of the quickest way to tell if someone is a creationist? Is that they use the word Darwinism at all. I mean, of course this wouldn't apply to all cases, but I generally don't see people who take evolution as true use the word Darwinism. It's just not really a thing. The word itself carries a connotation as if this idea is only that of one person's, when in reality, of course that's not the case, since the idea of evolution has gone through over a century of refining by multiple scientists. Well, let's first see what his definition of these two terms are. Evolution in brief says that the world started in the following way. A few molecules were present in a fluid similar to a sort of soup. Then these molecules came together to form a sort of bubble. And inside this bubble, the beginning of DNA or nucleic acid started to form. Next, this progressed to plants. And the plants started to produce oxygen. Of course, each of these steps took hundreds of millions of years. Okay, so the following few minutes involves him detailing this process on how we got from single-celled organisms, to algae, to fish, to amphibians, to reptiles, to dinosaurs, and eventually to primates. Instead of giving us the definition of evolution, he gives us the conclusion made by evolution. These are different things, but I'm not going to nitpick further. This is what is called the theory of evolution. Wait, you were just defining evolution, but you said just now you defined the theory of evolution? Those are not the same. The theory of evolution is natural selection, at least the leading theory is, and natural selection is a mechanism that attempts to describe evolution itself. Darwinism adopts the theory of evolution, but goes further by suggesting that some of the land-dwelling species gave rise to the next through random mutations. First of all, it's not random. Second of all, why only land-dwelling animals? What makes the animals that live on land different in this process than those that live in water? I guess dolphins don't get mutations anymore? The water is somehow a powerful agent that negates mutations? Huh, no wonder we're always told to drink plentiful water. It all makes sense now. That process, according to Darwinists, was purely random. In this respect, randomness is the antithesis of God's design. Mutations may be random, but what out of these mutations get passed on to future generations is not. That's why it's overall non-random. If you had a plate of 50 jelly beans that you poured from a bag, the colors that you get are essentially random. But if you had to pick five of these to eat, then that is not random. Overall, the flavor of jelly beans that you consumed were your decision, even if the initial 50 given to you were random. Darwinists do not believe in God. According to them, evolution occurs through random mutations. The idea of there being no creator is not acceptable by religion or even by reason. Okay, so let me get this straight. You think evolution is the process of turning single-celled organisms into more complex organisms like primates, and Darwinism is the idea on top of that claiming that this is driven by random mutations. Okay, nitpicks of definitions aside, I don't think anyone at all would say mutations is the sole mechanism in which a species evolves. Obviously, it is combined with a variety of mechanisms that drives the gene pool towards a certain direction, so you are already strawmanning here. I have a question though. Do you think so-called evolutionists just don't know or think there isn't a mechanism that drives the process of evolution? then? That's also inconsistent with reality. There isn't just evolutionists and Darwinists. There's no distinction between the two. Actually, the term Darwinist shouldn't even exist. The point is, the only opponent you're up against are people who have some degree of scientific literacy, who know that the process of evolution entails populations changing over time, and that this is due to multiple different factors, two of which are mutations in natural selection. If I were you, I wouldn't try to separate these people into more than one category. There is, however, other scientists who believe that evolution is actually more of a process of development. There is someone who is developing species into other species. They believe that evolution is actually the way the creator has chosen to deal with his creation. This has been something I thought about a lot. I've interacted with a lot of different religious people, and probably the most popular way they try to integrate their beliefs into evolution is by claiming that God guided the process of evolution, which eventually turned all the living organisms into what they are today. While yes, this is better than being a young earth creationist, I still have a few problems with this belief system. Now I won't go into the stories with 
within the Bible or Quran directly, so instead we'll just talk about the idea of God directing evolution. The question here is, why? There's no reason to inject the idea of a guide in there when there simply doesn't need to be one. The only reason would be to desperately attempt to have your religion somehow fit within reality. But what scientific reason is there exactly to do so? Evolution can be entirely explained with natural drivers. We've mapped out all the mechanisms and we've done countless simulations. Does God interfere with computer simulations too? The great thing about science is that it weeds out a lot of the unnecessary fluff. If a claim cannot be proven, it is not accepted to be true. That doesn't apply to just claims by itself, but also additional details within claims. God guiding evolution is not something that has been supported by any sort of evidence in any shape or form, so it is unreasonable to believe in such a silly hypothesis. Now I don't want to criticize this idea too much because it is still better than being a young earth creationist. Despite all the videos I make, I don't have a problem with people who accept both science and religion simultaneously. Sure, you wouldn't be the type that thinks skeptically and scientifically, but at least you do trust science to some degree, which is better than many of the alternatives. Advocates of this school of thought state that God chose with his absolute will evolution as a means of bringing into existence all living beings through a lengthy process. Why? Why? <laughs> Why? <laughs> Actually, there are a number of Muslim scholars who address this issue as well. One of these is Ibn Khaldun. Ibn Khaldun mentioned in his Muqaddimah, which is a book called The Introduction, some very important things. He said, look at the realm of formation, how it started from elements, then plants, then animals in an exquisitely progressive way. Plants to animals is progressive? I wouldn't necessarily say so. Modern plants have very complex functions that animals don't have. Animals, on the other hand, also have traits that plants don't have. They evolved in different directions and they both play very different roles in the ecosystem. But if you're talking about how organisms slowly became more and more complex as time goes on, as evident from the fossil record, then yes, we do see such a pattern. But that in no way, shape, or form means that a creator is doing this. Because if there was an intelligent designer, then he could easily just make all organisms complex to begin with, instead of waiting a few billion years. The slow development of complexity is more so what we would expect from a fully natural process of evolution without intelligent intervention. Because that's how evolution works. Complexity is a byproduct of what gets selected out by natural selection. The upper limit of the elements is connected to the lower limit of plants, such as grasses and seedless plants. And the upper limit of plants, such as palm trees, is connected to the lower limit of animals, such as snails and oysters. The fuck does that mean? The meaning of connection here is that the upper limit of one is strangely prepared to become the lower limit of the next level. Your very premise that you built your argument on is flawed to begin with. If you're going to name a bunch of modern plants, they aren't objectively inferior to animals. They are just different and evolved in different ways. What is your standard for judging if something is more evolved or progressed than something else? Is it movement? Animals can move and plants can't? What about being able to produce your own source of energy? In that case, plants very much come out on top. And after you've picked the category on how to judge progressiveness, then determine a unit in which we can use to quantitatively judge an organism. Because so far it seems you're just arbitrarily saying that animals are a tier above plants, but why? You've built up a premise you can't back up. While the upper limit of animals and the lower limit of humans is the monkey. Let's assume that you're correct in that there's a transition between species of various progressiveness. In that case, how does that help your argument at all? Why does that mean that there was some sort of interjection from an intelligent being? How are you making that connection? This was all mentioned in Ibn Khaldun's Muqaddimah, or introduction. Of course it was. So now we have three groups of people. The first is the Darwinians who believe in evolution which occurs purely randomly. Generally, Darwinians refuse to listen to any opinion that contradicts their own. Yeah, these Darwinists that only believe that evolution occurs solely by chance. They don't listen to other people. I don't know why. You know, probably has to do with a lot of their own personal reasons, I suppose. I mean, you know, it probably also has to do with the fact that they don't exist. <laughs> I don't know. They also do not have explanations for many things in the theory of evolution, such as how language evolved. They have no explanation for that. They say that 140,000 years ago, man started to give names to things. This issue is not explained, except by the Holy Quran. Language is a byproduct of intelligence. I would love to hear your explanation on how certain early human ancestors, such as the Homo ergaster, had language. Seems like humans weren't the only ones giving names to objects. I guess while the human ancestors were evolving, God was like, here, have language. Oh fuck, wait, you're not evolved enough yet. Yeah, die, die, die. And that's how the Homo ergaster went extinct. 
They claim that their theory has been proven beyond doubt, clear as daylight, and is evidenced by the fact that all scientists are Darwinians. But this is actually not true. Yep, it's not true. Because no one fits in your definition of a Darwinist. On a side note, if someone says that there are a lot of scientists that don't agree with a certain scientific fact, then that should immediately throw up a red flag. Anyway, that's my time today. Once again, it's nice to be back and I can't wait to read all that stupid shit you guys have to write in the comment section below. Special thank you to Fireshard and Liam for being the top supporters over at Patreon. It certainly isn't an easy time on YouTube right now, so your support means a lot. I'll see you next week.